Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of They Came to Baghdad by Agatha Christie. So, as always, I'm going to start by reading the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, a large number of persons, a large quantity of jewels, enormous sums of money have disappeared. Confirmation of the manufacturer of a secret weapon has been obtained by a British agent. All the persons concerned were meeting in Baghdad, and the code word was, a white camel loaded with oats is coming over the pass. Yep. So, uh, as you can tell from that, it's like a sort of political thriller, espionage sort of thing, which Christie isn't uh, normally particularly good at. I, I would say her cosy mysteries are better. This doesn't have like Poirot or Marple or anything like that, but it does have this um, protagonist who I really enjoyed, who's like this headstrong young woman who basically, when she makes up her mind to do something, she does it. Admittedly, she does go to Baghdad purely because she fancied some dude. Which is a bit weird, but um, apart from that, she's a cracking little character. And uh, I always think that Christie's at her best when she's writing about like foreign countries as well, uh, as is the case with like Death and the Nile. We get this bit which I enjoyed. Goodbye, Victoria. Party, say more and peu, added Edward with a very British accent. These French Johnnies know their stuff. Our English chaps just mourned her on about parting being being a sweet sorrow. Silly asses. And so yeah, this is a bit of sort of characterisation of, of our main character here, uh, right at the start of chapter 4. It says a good deal for the buoyancy of Victoria's temperament that the possibility of failing to attain her objective did not for a moment occur to her. Not for her the lines about ships that pass in the night. It was certainly unfortunate that when she had, well, frankly, fallen for an attractive young man, that that young man should prove to be just on the verge of departure to a place distant some 3,000 miles. He might so easily have been going to Aberdeen, or Brussels, or even Birmingham. And uh, I think this is just... I don't know, interesting to read from a woman's point of view, especially a woman of the time. Um, Dear me, Miss Jones, not out of a post again. I really hope this last one. Quite impossible, said Victoria firmly. I really couldn't begin to tell you what I had to put up with. A pleasurable flush rose in Miss Spencer's pallid cheek. Not, she began. I do hope not. He didn't seem to me really that sort of man, but of course he is a trifle gross. I do hope. It's quite all right, said Victoria. She conjured up a pale, brave smile. I can take care of myself. Oh, of course, but it's the unpleasantness. Yes, said Victoria, it is unpleasant. However, she smiled bravely again. I felt this was quite relatable, at least to me. The intense mental efforts of concentration that Victoria had made overnight, and possibly the subconscious satisfaction of no longer having to be punctually in the office at 9am, made Victoria oversleep herself. Uh, she goes off to Heathrow Aerodrome as well, and Heathrow being two words, which I think is quite cool. It gives a sense of the time and of the place names, you know, because it's Heathrow Airport now. I thought this was interesting. Mrs. Cardew Trench flicked Dakin's glass with her fingernail. Lemonade as usual, she said. Bad sign, that. Victoria asked why it was a bad sign. When a man only drinks when he is alone. Well, at the moment, that's all I can do, really. I thought this was kind of funny as well. Um, what would you do? Try and see. Why do you read Karl Marx? You cannot understand it. You are much too stupid. Do you think they would ever accept you as a member of the Communist Party? You are not well enough educated politically. Why shouldn't I read it? It was meant for people like me, workers. You are not a worker. You are bourgeoisie. You cannot even type properly. Look at the mistakes you make. Some of the cleverest people can't spell, said Victoria with dignity. But surely workers would be less likely to be able to spell. I don't know, I guess it was back in the day when a lot of workers were typists, weren't they? I thought this was good as well. Must we? said Victoria dreamily. Things all labelled and put into cases don't seem a bit real somehow. I went to the British Museum once. It was awful and dreadfully tiring on the feet. The past is always boring, said Edward. The future's much more important. Yes, but we need to pay attention to the past to guide the future, mate. I like this little exchange too. Uh, one would waste a lot of time. Yes, but we're back again at the question, what is time? And what is a waste? You don't have much choice of light fiction here. Tale of Two Cities, Pride and Prejudice, and The Mill on the Floss. I'm reading The Tale of Two Cities. Never read it before. Never. I always thought Dickens would be stuffy. What an idea. Just thought that was kind of, I guess, probably Christie's own reading taste coming in. So yeah, overall, I did enjoy They Came to Bad Dad. I particularly like this uh, female main character, uh, Victoria, and I like the setting as well. It works quite well as a standalone read, so it'd be a good one if you're new to Christie. Overall, I gave it a 4.25 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of They Came to Baghdad. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.